Hi everyone. This is Easy Examples Learn Data Analysis Visually. Today I'll introduce the implementation of Bayesian inference from a very easy example. If you have read some materials from internet or textbooks about the Bayesian inference, but are still not very clear about how it works, I believe that you will have a better understanding after watching this video. First, what does Bayesian inference do? We answer this by showing our example question. In our example, there are a number of data samples or observations, x1, x2, etc. We know that these data samples are following the exponential distribution. The histogram below shows the actual distribution of our sample data. Now the question we need to answer is what is the estimate of lambda, the only parameter? There are two major estimation strategies, the point estimation and the interval estimation. A well-known method for point estimation is the maximum likelihood estimation, in which the estimation of lambda is the inverse of the average of the data samples. The Bayesian inference is an interval estimation method that estimates the distribution of possible lambda rather than a single value. The advantages of Bayesian inference is obvious because it reveals more information from the observed data samples. Here is a summary of the procedure of Bayesian inference. The steps have been customized for our example question. In step 1, we assume a prior distribution of lambda. The prior distribution can be any form guessed by the analyst. The prior distribution does not take the observed data into account. In step 2, we generate random lambdas according to the prior distribution we guessed in step 1. In step 3, we compute the likelihood of each lambda generated in step 2. The likelihood in this step will be explained later. Finally, we draw the posterior distribution of lambda. The posterior distribution of lambda accounts for the observed data. So here, we can see that the Bayesian inference is actually a process of improving the guess distribution of lambda by taking the observed data into consideration. Now we get to the detailed steps. In the first step, we assume the prior distribution. For simplicity, we assume that lambda is uniformly distributed from 1 to 6 because we guess that the lambda is some value between 1 and 6. In step 2, we generate a thousand random lambdas according to the prior distribution assumed in step 1. We use lambda n to denote the nth generated lambda. The histogram here shows the distribution of the thousand lambdas and we can see that it is uniformly distributed from 1 to 6. In step 3, we compute the likelihood of each lambda n generated in step 2. The likelihood of lambda n, L lambda n here, is defined as the probability of observing the 50 data samples and having lambda equal to lambda n. So, the likelihood of lambda n can be obtained by multiplying the conditional probability of observing the 50 data samples given lambda equal to lambda n and the probability of having lambda equal to lambda n. The probability of lambda equal to lambda n 
can be easily obtained from the PDF of the uniform distribution. In our example, it equals to one fifth. The probability of observing the 50 data samples given lambda equals to lambda n can be obtained by multiplying the probabilities of having each data sample given lambda equal to lambda n. The probability of observing a data sample given a lambda can be obtained from the PDF of the exponential distribution. When we have the likelihood for each lambda n, we are able to draw the posterior distribution of lambda. As mentioned earlier, the posterior distribution of lambda can be represented as the probability of lambda equal to lambda n given the observed data samples. Based on the theory of the Bayesian inference, the posterior probability is proportional to the likelihood of lambda n. Therefore, we can write the posterior probability as L lambda n over S. The S here is the sum of the likelihood for all lambda n. When we have the posterior probability for every lambda n, we are able to draw the posterior probability curve. In our Bayesian inference procedure, we generate a thousand lambda n, and so we plot a thousand data points. We can see that these points form a nice curve, which is actually the PDF of the posterior distribution of lambda. Now, we are able to draw the confidence interval. In the example here, we show the 95% confidence interval, which means that any guess of lambda between this interval is acceptable under the confidence level of 95%. In this animated figure, we show how the number of the observed data influences the estimation. It can be observed that as the number of data samples increases, the PDF of the posterior distribution of lambda is deeper, which means that we have a more accurate guess of lambda. In practice, if we are not sure how many data samples are enough, we usually increase the number gradually until the obtained PDF of the posterior distribution does not change significantly. At the end, we wrap up by giving a summary about Bayesian inference. There are two key points we need to remember. First, Bayesian estimation is an interval estimation, and it estimates the distribution of the parameters rather than just a single value. Second, it is a process of improving the distribution function by considering the observed data. In the example we used here, we only considered a single unknown parameter. In practice, we usually need to estimate the joint distribution of multiple unknown parameters, but the procedure is very similar. If you are interested, you can try this multi-parameter example. We try to estimate the parameters mu and sigma for a normally distributed dataset. As a result, you will plot the joint distribution of mu and sigma as in the figure. Thank you for watching Easy Examples. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave your comments or contact me from the email in the bottom of the slide. Thank you again.